Welcome, students. Welcome, Mr. Kopsack. Today, we're here at the James A. Garfield National Historic Site here in Metter, Ohio. And one of the things that we're going to learn about today are primary sources. Places like the James A. Garfield home, as you can tell behind you, maybe just from some of the furnishings and things that you see, is that this is an old home, that some of the, most everything that's in the home is very old. And these are primary sources. They tell us about the way life used to be for the people that live in this home over 130 years ago. And as we go through our lesson today, you'll learn something more about those people. First of all, I don't know if you uh, had a chance yet with your teacher or not. Does, uh, I just want to find out, does anybody know anything about primary sources? Um, raise your hands. Let me see. How many of you have heard that word before? Primary sources. Primary sources. Okay, I see that some of you have. Excellent. How many people watched that video? Did you do that? No? Okay, that's all right. Today we're going to learn about primary sources. And your teacher uh, may have given you the pretest already. Yes, all right, excellent. And so if you've done that, I think we're ready to, to start talking about some, to see some examples. Now, I see that you're already at your tables. And what I would like for us to do now is to, the first thing is to practice taking turns. How many people have done that in their school lives before? Taking turns? Yes. I know that uh, sometimes we're all excited. We all want to grab, grab, grab but we're going to take turns. Now, I hope that uh, you have already ordered yourselves by uh, whose uh, name comes first in the alphabet in your groups. Whose name comes first, okay? So if your name is closest to the letter A, you get to go first. Why don't we go ahead and open that bag that's at your table and take out the little red bag that's inside there. If you would take that out, please. Okay, I see that everybody's taking that out. Very good. And that person, if you would open the bag and take out what's in there, and what do we see inside that red bag? Well, it's a t-shirt. Yes, very nice. All right, so I know that every group has a different t-shirt, but you just get to focus on your group, the people in your table. Look at that shirt. Have a look at that. Okay, now all of us should have a sheet of paper that has a little bit of a grid on it there. I know it's a little hard to see in my camera here, but it has a little bit of a grid on there. And let's find the word shirt. And who do you think owned that shirt? What kind of person? Was it a boy or a girl? And how would you know that? Now you can have a moment here to think about it. Maybe somebody at your table has an idea. Take turns. Maybe offer ideas why. Now, we don't interrupt each other. Remember, we're going to demonstrate good manners today. And we're going to practice uh, discussing these things. One of our skills today, not just about learning primary sources, but can we work in small groups? Can we learn to discuss things? Historians have to work together and share ideas. And it's not an argument, and it's not whoever has the loudest voice or ever talks the fastest. So, go ahead. Now wait. Okay, now make sure we're writing down our paper again. Who do we think who do we think that belonged to? The, t the shirt Did that belonged to a boy or a girl. And how do we know that? What information about that shirt tells us that it had to belong to a boy? And if you don't know, and you say, not sure, you could write that down, that's okay. And how old do you think? The next one is, how old? Was that a younger person or an older person? And once again, you would answer, you would write down, how I know that this is a shirt that probably belonged to a young person, somebody who's still in school, maybe a high school student, maybe an elementary school student, or this is more like the type of shirt that my mom or dad would wear. How would you know that? And then, the third thing, okay, go ahead, I'll give you time, I'm sorry, I don't mean to rush you. And the third thing is, can you tell anything else about that person, some of their interests? So if it says something about baseball on the shirt, what does that tell you? The person probably likes baseball, very good. So, or if it says bowling on there, they probably liked bowling, excellent. 
go ahead, write down on there. What person, who do you think it was? Was it a girl, a teenage girl that likes baseball? Or was it an adult man who likes fishing? Who do you think owned those clothes? All right, very nice, very nice. I see that we're all finishing up there. Now, our second primary source, our second primary source involves a yellow bag. So, the second person whose name in the alphabet, the second person, if you would go ahead and take the yellow bag out of the duffel bag and leave everything else in there. We don't want to be grabbing too soon. We're all in good time. Now, that yellow bag... Go ahead and open that up, and what do we find in there? Oh, it's like a watch or maybe a bracelet. Some different groups have different things. Very nice. Now look at that. Look closely. Make sure everybody in the group has a chance to see. Put it down on the desk so that everyone has a chance to look at it. We have to be careful. These things will, are not made out of steel or stone. They could break. And be careful. Very good. And once again, we go to our, our little matrix here and we write down, who do you think the same person that owned that t-shirt also owned that bracelet or that watch? So that gives us a second bit of information about that person. A second bit of information. I guess I forgot to show you, and I apologize to you for this, in my... Behind me, we have a picture of a room in the James A. Garfield home. Now, I really should be having a picture of some clothing that James Garfield had, but I did, forgot those pictures today, so we're going to have to use our imagination. Pretend like there's a picture of James Garfield's clothing there. And we can see, look, he's got an old overcoat on. Yes, so what can we tell about him based just on those clothes? Well, that's the clothes of an adult, right? That's so he's a man. Those are not clothes you would go out and cut firewood with or go fishing or hunting with. Those are professional clothes. So we learned from that that James Garfield was a professional man and the quality of the clothes that he wears say that he, had, he was comfortable. He was not poor. He was not the richest man in the world, but he, had, he, was, he could afford a nice coat. Now our second picture here. Again, I forgot my pictures of watches and bracelets, so... Here I have pictures of their plates. So what does that tell me? Well, I learned some things about James Garfield based on his plates here. Specifically that his wife and his children had some artistic talent. They painted these uh, plates and uh, uh, tiles right here. And whoop, right there. Get a little bit backwards. And uh, so from that we learned that the Garfield family uh, the Garfield family was very talented. They had nice things, and um, they, you know, we learned something from the things that they owned. At your table, again, the same person that owned that T-shirt also owned that bracelet or watch. So, if you thought that that was a boy's T-shirt, is it also a boy's watch, or do you have to think about it some more? If it was a boy's, a girl's T-shirt, is it also a girl's bracelet? How do you know? See, a historian gathers together information and puts all these details together. They put all these details together. So, and was this a, an adult bracelet or an adult watch? Or was it a kid's bracelet? Anything else you know? If it was a watch that had a picture of a cartoon character on there, like SpongeBob or Mickey Mouse or somebody like that, then... What does that tell us about the person who owned it? They probably liked that cartoon character. Sure. All right. So let's go to the third bag. And the third bag will be a blue bag. So third person alphabetically in your group. Third person alphabetically whose name comes next. Take the blue bag out. Open it up. And inside there is a book. Yes, did you see that? All right, I see everybody's opening their books there. Very nicely done. Now those books tell us something about that particular, uh, the person who owned both the t-shirt and the watch. They also owned that book. And I happen to know these people 
So I'm, I'm not going to tell you yet who owned them, but I know who they were, who owned these things, and I want you to see if you can guess who it was. See if you can guess who owned these things. Was that book, did that book belong to a boy or a girl? How do I know? Well, because boys like to read books about... Is that what you think? Is that always true? Do sometimes are there books that both boys and girls like to read? Can we tell just from that one piece of information? And was that a book for an adult or for a child? Is that a book that only kids read or do adults read them as well? Anything else you know? Well, if they wrote a, read a book about horses, then they probably like horses. So a detail that you could write down is... I also know that the person probably likes horses. So if they have a t-shirt where it says it's about baseball and a, and a watch with Spongebob and a book about horses, we know this is somebody who is into baseball and Spongebob and horses. We can learn some details about somebody's life. In the same way, if we look in somebody's room and we see the things that are on their walls or Again, I wish I had the books that I was supposed to have the picture of, but I don't, but I will next time. And the details in this room tell us something about the things that were of interest to James Garfield. So, that's what we're working on here, is what are the, all the details we can put together? Well, he had nice clothes, and he had a nice watch. And he read these very serious books, so we, and about a lot of different things. He read books about math, and he read books about history, and he read books of poetry. So we know that he's somebody who had nice clothes, he had a nice watch, he read a lot of interesting and difficult books. So this is somebody with a lot of learning. We learn one more detail about James Garfield based on the things that he owned. All right, let's go ahead and take out that final item from the bag. It's a green bag. The fourth person in the group, go ahead and pull that out. Fourth person. And open that bag up. All right, and what did you see in there? Oh, yeah, it's a shoe. No, don't sniff it. I see some of you putting your nose to it. That's not a good idea. Yeah, we cleaned the shoes. Nobody's foot has been in them in a while. But uh, still a good idea to keep them away from our faces. I know, I know. So... What do we learn from a shoe? Does that tell us more about who might have owned it? Well, a lot of us think so. We think, well, this is obviously a boy's shoe or a girl's shoe or a kid's shoe or an adult's shoe. We can learn some more things about that. If it's a, it's a, a, a dress shoe, then we know that it's somebody that might have gone, like to dress up. If it's a flip-flop, it's somebody that maybe will dress very casually. Now, sometimes if it's a sports shoe, we can guess, well, they probably played sports. They played soccer or somewhere where you need cleats, maybe football. Now, if it's a cleat, does that prove that it's a boy or a girl? Do boys wear cleats? Well, what about girls? Do they wear cleats? So again, sometimes we have to make sure that we take all the information together. We don't just look at the one detail. We look at all of them. We put the shirt and the watch, and the book, and the shoe together, and then we form a big picture based on all four details before we answer, say, well, it's a shoe, it's a soccer shoe, and boys play soccer, so it belongs to a boy. Put all four details together, and then we have a better idea of who this probably belonged to. In the same way, we have another detail here about James Garfield, and that's this Again, I wish I had the pictures that I was supposed to have, but I left them at home. I thought they were on my little thumb drive, but they're not. So instead, I'm going to show you this picture. And again, here are some pictures of his books, and he liked to sit in this chair. And what I learned about James Garfield is that uh, he w lived a comfortable life. He was a man of many pursuits, many interests. He was a scholarly individual, and he liked to sit in this chair sideways, so he wasn't all serious all the time. But those are some of the things that the primary sources or the effects or the artifacts of his life have helped us to learn. Okay, so you had four things on your desk in your group. Okay, and you've had a chance to look at them with the people in your group. You had a chance to fill out your chart. 
your little matrix here. Now at the bottom, you ask, based on what you know and discuss with other students or your group, write a few sentences describing who you think owned the items that your group looked at. And we want to practice using good writing skills, so I think that these items belong to, there's a little support for you, if you're not sure how to get this, I think they belong to a boy. I think that these items belong to a girl. And I think they belong to a man. I think they belong to a woman. And why would you think so? And then write down, because I know that only or mostly girls like, or because I have one myself and I am a... So go ahead and... I'll give you a minute or two to write that down. Your teacher will be around to help you. I'll wander the room and see that you have everything that you need. Very nice. I like to see that people are working so quietly on this. Mr. Kopsack is a very lucky teacher to have students like you who are such good listeners, such hard workers. All right, I want to give you a little tour of our home here, the James A. Garfield National Historic Site. It's here in Mentor, Ohio. Has anybody been there? Raise your hand. Anybody maybe you think you have? Some of us have driven by it when you see some pictures. You may be like, oh, I know that place. I have been there. Or if, you know, since we're just in Geneva, but if you, uh, you're in Geneva, rather, if you were a group from Southern California, it would be much less likely that I'd expect to, that you've been here. But here's a little bit of a tour that I can take you on. And there we go. A new partner association has been created to help promote the James A. Garfield National Historic Site. Andrew Mizak, a National Park Service volunteer, is the staff coordinator for this new friends group. The mission statement is simple. We're a group dedicated to support this site uh, but also to support and promote the legacy of the Garfield family and administration as well as uh, their, their careers in, in public service and their, their, uh, their service to the nation. The Friends Group created in February of this year plans to tender that support by helping bring more visitors to the site. Right now um, it's about spreading the word about who we are and it's about promoting this site, um, sharing with the greater community you know, that this national park is located here in Mentor, Ohio, that this national park honors a former president of the United States. I'll, I'll hear people who are from Lake County say, oh, I've lived in Lake County my whole life. I've driven past it a thousand times. I've never been here and I didn't know what it was about. And part of that is telling the story about what this location is and why it's significant to our nation's history. Garfield, the 20th President of the United States, has a long history of public service, both to the state of Ohio and to our nation. He served in the Ohio State Senate from 1859 to 1861, where he represented Summit and Portage counties. Then he went on to uh, serve as an officer and general in the Union Army during the Civil War. Then nine terms in the United States House of Representatives, re representing much of the same congressional district that Menor is in today. And then he, he was the last president to go directly from the U.S. House to the presidency. It's a legacy that Ohio and Mentor can be proud of, and one that more people will know about thanks to the new Friends Group. The uh, advantage of having a partner association like the Friends to any public land, uh, and many public lands throughout the United States have them, uh, is that it gives the park a little extra voice. It gives, uh, it gives the park a way to be, uh, to be promoted within the community, to be, to engage in, in outreach and, and to invite others to the community in a way that cannot be done by the park itself. Uh, federal law precludes, for example, the National Park Service from direct marketing. So that's why you'll never see a commercial for a national park like you'll see a commercial for an amusement park. Yeah, so there's a little bit about our, our site here, the James A. Garfield National Historic Site. Now again, today we were talking about primary sources and some of the examples of primary sources include the things that you have on the desk in front of you right now. The shirt, the shoes, the watch or bracelet, the book. These are items or artifacts that somebody would own. Other things that might be primary sources might include letters that people wrote. We could learn about them because of things that they may have written. 
We may ha- learn things about them by the tools that they used, or uh, sometimes the uh, even the food that they ate. If we have leftovers, sometimes, believe it or not, people's food is preserved for years and years and years, and um, so we go, ah, now we know something more about them based on what their diet was. We can look at their forms of transportation, their old buildings, their architecture, paintings, all sorts of things. Even old movies and posters can teach us about the way people used to live and something more about the past. So as we grow up, we want to learn more about other people. We use primary sources, the things they actually owned and used, uh, to tell us more about them. So I hope that you have enjoyed this discussion today of primary sources. Again, what were we learning about today? Primary sources. Say that again with me. Primary sources. Because I have a feeling in just a moment Mr. Kopsack is going to ask you again if you know what primary sources are and if you can give some examples of them. So why don't we go through real fast. Somebody tell me an example of a primary source. And, okay. Oh, very good. Some of you were just paying attention. All right, a shirt or shoes, books, very good. Jewelry, watches, bracelets, good. Letters, yes. Movies, posters, buildings, all of those things. Excellent, excellent. See, we're all very good listeners today. I want to thank you for your participation today. I hope someday you get to visit us here at the James A. Garfield National Historic Site or maybe take another class with us online, distance learning. I have enjoyed it. Thank you, Mr. Kopsack, for being so helpful today with us, for us and inviting us into your classroom. And I've really enjoyed this opportunity. So have a great day, students. Bye. See you sometime soon.